Hello! Today we are going to be talking about measuring capacitance. However, we aren't going to be performing just any old capacitance measurements, but measurements without desoldering capacitors from a PCB. Over the past several years, different websites have offered various devices that measure capacitance and other details of capacitors without desoldering them from a PCB. There's been lots of discussion on different forums. Some people say that they purchased them, others don't recommend it, etc. All of these discussions raise two questions for me. First of all, why do the products listed never include well-known manufacturers like Fluke, Appa, UniT, Mastec, etc.? That seems to imply that none of the most trusted brands produce any of this type of device. The second question is strictly technical. It's based on elementary knowledge of school physics. At school, we are taught that if two capacitors are connected in parallel, their equivalent capacitance will be equal to the sum of their individual capacitances. However, if they are in a series, then we have a more complicated formula. We have to deal with inverted values. So, 1 divided by C equals 1 divided by C1 plus 1 divided by C2. Here we have a PCB, and we want to measure the capacitance of this capacitor. Its contacts are right here. When we connect a multimeter, or another device that measures capacitance to those contacts, we will obtain a value of the actual capacitance only if one single element, this capacitor, is soldered between these two points. Here we have to remember that there's more than one element on the PCB. In fact, there are more than a hundred. Therefore, the capacitance between these two points would be really hard to calculate. This is why, even theoretically, based on the knowledge of school physics, it is not possible to measure the capacitance of an element without desoldering it from a PCB. Enough with theory, though. Let's move on to the real world. We will conduct an EV experiment with a number of different measurements on this PCB. As you can see, it has many different components. Electrolytic capacitors, SMD capacitors, inductors, resistors, microchips, light emitting diodes, it has the works. We will conduct our measurements in different phases. I have already completed the first one by writing down all of the nominal capacitance values in the points where measurements will be taken. There's one exception. There is no capacitor in point 5, as it has been previously removed. Just for kicks, we will measure the capacitance in this point as well. In phase 2, we will measure the capacitance of those points without desoldering the capacitors. In phase 3, I will desolder all capacitors, measure their capacitance as usual, and record the values. We will then compare them to the original values and find a result. Let's begin. We'll turn on the multimeter. As you can see, I chose a UniT UT139C because it measures capacitance very well. We also have another video about this. So let's measure point 1. The capacitance is 100 microfarads. It's supposed to be 47. We already see an inconsistency. Point 2. Let me try again. Somewhere close to 164. 164 microfarads. Obviously, its capacitance is significantly different from the value printed on the capacitor. In point 3, we should have 470 microfarads. However, we get almost 1 millifarad. This is two times as high. Let's record this. The capacitance should be 47 in point 4. And it's about 164 microfarads. In point 5, right here, there's no capacitor. But for the accuracy of the experiment, let's measure it as well. What can I say? It looks like we have an invisible capacitor on the PCB with a capacitance of 58 microfarads. We should patent this technology!
I will also record zero in this slot, as there is no capacitor here. Lastly, point six. We should have 100 microfarads. Let's see what we get. Sixty six microfarads. This is the most accurate measurement so far, with a thirty five per cent error. As you can see from this first step, if we measure capacitance without desoldering capacitors from the PCB, there is a big difference between the nominal or stated values and the measured values. We will now desolder and measure them in a more correct way. It is possible that some of the capacitor's capacitance has changed over time. Capacitor number three. Number four. There is no capacitor number five. And number six. This soldering iron tip is not very convenient for tasks like these. A bigger one would have been better. So, I have desoldered the capacitors. Now, let's measure their actual capacitance. It looks like our multimeter has automatically switched off. We will use a different test lead this time, as the standard one is not convenient for this type of measurement. That's because the capacitor leads are gone. As you can see, this one has a capacitance of 67 microfarads. and this one has 46 microfarads, the same as the value printed on the capacitor. Capacitor number three, its capacitance should be 470 microfarads. Four hundred forty Here, it's 49 microfarads. And in our first, or in this case, our last capacitor, 
with a printed value of 47 microfarads and a measured value on the PCB of around 100, about 48 microfarads. The results speak for themselves. The capacitance values are incorrect in every point except the last one. But this is an exception to the rule, rather than proof. Here, we didn't even have a capacitor, and we measured 58 microfarads. Over here, we had a stated capacitance of 47 microfarads. We measured it on the PCB at 164, and it turned out to actually be somewhere around 46 to 47. Here, the measured capacitance was almost twice as high as the actual one. The same here with 164 microfarads, when it should have been 49. Here, we measured 100 microfarads on the PCB, but its actual capacitance is a mere 48 microfarads. So, as we can clearly see, the measurements that are in the second column are not measurements at all. They are more like a lottery number from a fortune cookie. Some may say that I wasn't using a special RLC meter that measures ESR, but a regular multimeter instead. First of all, this multimeter measures capacitance very accurately, as we have previously shown. Secondly, what is ESR? It's basically a series of resistances. Therefore, no matter what you use for your measurements, even if it's the best device for measuring capacitance, you cannot measure the ESR of an individual capacitor. Instead, you will end up measuring an equivalent value of the entire circuit. Many devices present themselves as tools that can measure capacitance without desoldering the elements of a PCB. Most of the descriptions written online have one main idea. A small voltage is applied to these points in a way that supposedly doesn't affect anything surrounding them. Just this small area. So this capacitor will not be affected anymore and it will not take part in the measurements. But that's all bogus, because it's impossible to measure this capacitor if there are a lot of other things here on the PCB. You can measure anything else you want, but not the capacitance. Actually, you can measure an equivalent capacitance, but not the capacitance of this particular capacitor by itself. Therefore, do not buy these devices. Instead, buy regular, quality multimeters. You don't necessarily need this one even. Just make sure you buy regular measuring equipment from good manufacturers and measure things properly. In this video, I have shown you that measuring capacitance without desoldering capacitors from a PCB is a myth. Please like this video if you found it useful and subscribe to our channel. We hope you have a great day and take correct measurements.